an early Halloween for the Clinton campaign last Friday. Uh, 11 days before the polls opened, the FBI director informing Congress that a whole new batch of emails were under scrutiny. In a message to his employees, James Comey explaining he felt it was his duty to inform lawmakers, even though he did not yet know, quote, the significance of this newly discovered batch of emails. A justified move or a reckless initiative that could change the course of history? The runaway lead that Hillary Clinton seemed to sport in the polls when the weekend uh, began has now melted back to too close to call status in many swing states. Her lead was already tightening beforehand. The question is, why? Why is a seasoned politician struggling against a real estate tycoon turned reality TV star who's never run for public office before? Despite a string of sexual harassment allegations complete with audio tape of, uh, of the man and Donald Trump's refusal to release his tax return, he is still in it with more than just a shot. Both candidates unpopular. We're going to be asking our panel, one, um, what impact will this strange and bitter campaign have on U.S. politics and on the rest of the planet? Today in the France 24 debate, are those new emails a game changer? With us from Scarborough, Maine, he's a former FBI special agent. Always a pleasure to speak with Jack Clunan. Hello. From Utica, New York, pollster John Zogby, senior analyst at uh, Zogby Analytics. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. From Berkeley, California, she's the author of Strangers in Their Own Land, Anger and Mourning on the American Right, a sociologist Arlie Russell Hochschild. Welcome to the France 24 debate. Thank you. And here in Paris, Jean-Éric Brana, who teaches at the University of Paris, too, the most recent author of Who Wants to uh, Destroy the Republican Party, the Astonishing Donald Trump. Hello. The uh, France 24 debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag F24 debate. The FBI director called it exceptional circumstances where the public needs information. For the Clinton campaign, an unsubstantiated 11th hour bombshell that has sparked fury. Pascal Davis has more. A trove of newly discovered emails from Hillary Clinton which the FBI is particularly interested in. The federal agency secured a warrant to search emails that were found on a device belonging to a top Clinton aide, Huma Abedin. They're on the lookout for anything that may contain classified information. With 650,000 emails to search through, investigators will be hard pushed to find anything before election day. It's an unwelcome blow to the Democratic candidate who thought she'd put the controversy behind her when a previous FBI probe into her use of private email server while Secretary of State was closed in July. The decision to investigate the emails has caused outrage by the Democratic leader in the Senate, Harry Reid, who in a letter to Comey says he could have broken the law. I am writing to inform you that my office has determined that these actions may violate the Hatch Act which bars FBI officials from using their official authority to influence an election. Through your partisan actions, you may have broken the law. Meanwhile, the Republican candidate is reveling in the controversy, sure that the FBI will find something damaging in Clinton's emails. So the 33,000 that she deleted and bleached, I think is going to be in the 650. This is the single biggest scandal since Watergate. And, this election and while Clinton focuses on the final push to the White House, opinion polls conducted before the email controversy surfaced again show her lead against Trump has been narrowing. An ABC News Washington Post national poll published on Sunday shows Clinton clinging on to a one-point lead. Yeah, and at the center of it all, Hillary Clinton's vice campaign chair, as you saw, Huma Abedin. Now, she's separated from former New York Congressman Anthony Weiner after yet another sexting scandal uh, against him that erupted in August. It's the investigation into Weiner that led the FBI to the new trove of uh, Clinton emails. Jack Clunan, what's your understanding of uh, w what it's all about? Well, it's not the subject that, that you and I have spoken about in the past, that's for sure. 
And, and I can tell you that this is, is, it's a bit unprecedented for the FBI director at this point in time, as your reporter indicated, to come out and say that um, they're looking into now a trove of emails that they, ha that they hadn't seen before. And, you know, in July, he said that the case is over with, um, that they did not find probable cause to indict. However, they thought that Hillary Clinton's use of the private server was reckless. So here we are, um, a little bit over a week to the election, and the FBI is now in the position of being accused of possibly influencing the election one way or the other, and I suspect not positively by a lot of people. It's not particularly unprecedented uh, for the FBI to uh, get involved in situations such like this, but what I think is unusual is the timing. I think that Director Comey uh, is fighting a couple of different fronts, not the least of which is his own personal reputation as the head of the FBI and his sense of integrity. But I think that there has been a lot of grumbling within the ranks, the rank and file FBI agents, who are not particularly pleased with the way the inquiry into two things, into the private server and into the Clinton Foundation inquiry, resulted in what they thought was people with power getting treated specially. Um, so that's my view. I'd be interested in hearing what your other panel members have to say. Uh, but before I turn to the rest of the panel, uh, what's your reaction when you hear uh, the uh, head of the Democrats in the Senate talking mm -hmm. about him possibly breaking the law by going public at this point with that? Well, I mean, he asserted that, that Director Comey might have violated the Hatch Act. Well, that's certainly not the case. And Director Comey has access to the best legal talent available. He's a very skilled litigator himself. He knows what the Hatch statute is, and he did not violate the Hatch statute. What he did and what he felt he had to do was let Congress know that he has now come across information that is pertinent to an inquiry that um, he has, even though he said he's cl it's closed, he feels there's stuff there that he has to alert Congress to. Now, be mindful of the fact that the FBI agents who went to a federal magistrate had to present information to show that there was probable cause to believe that the trove of emails found on a computer shared by Uma Abedin and her husband, Anthony Weiner, was pertinent to this ongoing inquiry. So you have the you have an independent person looking at this and saying, okay, I get it, you need to look at it. But if it's 30,000 emails, if it's 650,000, as some have asserted, I'm reasonably certain that nothing will be found or no conclusions will be reached, better put, before the election. John Zogby, what, what was your reaction when you saw the story break on Friday? Well, you know, I, I've never been one <clears throat> uh, to deal with process issues. You know, uh, the the email issue to date being the private server and the legality and the recklessness of all of that. But at this point in time, so close to the election, it begs the question, uh, as, as the FBI director had stated in late July when, when he said that there was a, a carelessness, a recklessness here, why are all those emails that may or may not have included uh, uh, highly sensitive uh, uh, classified materials, why were they on Anthony Weiner's computer? Uh, that then carries the, the alleged recklessness one step forward. Why would they be on Huma Abedin's, for starters? They're supposed to be classified, perhaps at least confidential. But then, you know, a third party who has nothing at all to do with this. This is now an issue. And why does the FBI director then raise the issue so close to the election? Well, one part of it, to be sure, is, is um, you know, the, the desire for redemption on his part. He's taken a hit at home with his own wife um, and from Republicans and as well, you know, a number of resignations by senior FBI agents. But the other matter is, well, what is he supposed to do? Is it better that all this be found out after people have voted? Uh, 
I mean, he must have concluded legitimately so that uh, where there's smoke, there's fire here. Uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. Ar Arlie Russell uh, Hothschild, uh, what's interesting is that uh, on the campaign trail, we've heard a lot of accusations. We still don't know of, obviously, what's, what's in those, these, these latest emails. There's been a lot of conspiracy theories and a lot of accusations that people in high places are hiding things. Uh, what's going to be the momentum now regarding that uh, st narrative, if you will, going into Election Day? Well, um, the, uh, the folks in southwest Louisiana that uh, I really got to know well over the last five years, who are now Trump supporters, um, are uh, in a way have made up their minds. And what's been, what they've been feeling is that they've been invisible. And to the extent they are visible, they feel like they've been denigrated or put down as rednecks and, uh, you know, ignorant people, um, rural people. So they are indignant about that and feel that also life has been going downhill. They've been working hard, but they haven't gotten a raise in 20 years. And that nobody else has picked up their cause. And along comes Donald Trump. And he is a charismatic figure right now. He's whipping them up. And uh, there's a kind of uh, euphoria uh, and a sense of almost uh, secular rapture. You know, I will go up uh, with him. Um, and I don't see people sitting on the fence or changing their minds. There's a mood now of confirming what you've already decided. I would say early on, they were very ambivalent about Trump because a lot of moral flaws. Uh, and these are good people who, who didn't like that. But I think they're going to still vote for him. Will this reinforce, that we, in their minds, the idea that the system is rigged? No. That's what Trump's been saying. And yes, I, I think it will reinforce that. I think you're right. All right, let's listen to how Hillary Clinton is uh, spinning it all. She initially kept a sober demeanor when the story broke on Friday. But by Saturday, the gloves were off at a campaign rally in Florida. It is pretty strange. It's pretty strange to put something like that out with such little information right before an election. In fact, in fact, it's not just strange, it's unprecedented and it is deeply troubling. Now here's the tough part, Johnny Prana. She may be right, but the, the way it's, it can sound as well, like she's uh, taking a leaf out of the Trump playbook here. Yeah, but I, actually, I would like to, to, to react to what she said, because um, what we had was the October surprise. And this is part of traditional America. You know, you've got Halloween, Thanksgiving, and October surprise for the elections. This is, everybody was uh, talking about that for very long. We were sure something might happen, and we thought that this had already happened with or the videos of Donald Trump. Actually, it happened also to Hillary Clinton. Or it happened before, contrary to what she said. It happened each time. Or there was each time, just at the end of the election, or a, a very big surprise. Not that kind of surprise. I, I mean, this time there is a, 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 it, it's, it's going to a, such a point, because it's hysteria in the United States. This campaign, I've I been mean, hysteric for are a year, um, and that's just the end. Uh, when you ask your um, your correspondent, or uh, the, the sociologist, I'm sorry, I don't remember her, her name. Arlie Russell Hoshchow. Uh, yeah, um, if the election is rigged or not, she said, I'm afraid it is. Um, to, to, to those people that she interviewed in Louisiana. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. But well, I, not me. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, uh, no, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I think it's exactly the reverse. The good point of this horrible uh, moment is that maybe Donald Trump will not claim it's rigged anymore. Um, my biggest fear was that on the 9th of September, uh, of mm. November, people will go down in the street and maybe are, um, there would be demonstrations or, 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 or worse. 
So maybe this will calm a little bit things for, for a while because Donald Trump will uh, focus on his euphoria, saying now that the director Comey uh, has done the right thing. And just let me say another word. I would like to have a compassionate thought for director Comey because I presume it's a very hard time for him uh, being right in the middle of those two camps who are hating each other and, and with all those people who are sure both of, of, of the side, I mean, that they're right. Uh, Jack, Jack Clunan, you didn't seem to think it was a Solomon-like decision on his part to go public. Well, um, I'm not sure that's a, that's a correct uh, view. Uh, look, he, he was damned if he did, damned if he didn't. Mm -hmm. He's playing it straight down the middle. I agree with your uh, colleague that it wasn't an easy decision for him. Um, but I think fundamentally for all of us, whether you're in France or whether you're here in the United States, you know, how did we get to this position? Yeah. And fundamentally, I think we all know how we got here. We got here because of one, reckless behavior on behalf of Anthony, Anthony Weiner, and number two, uh, what Director Comey des described as arguably reckless behavior on behalf of uh, Hillary Clinton. So the Clinton team, you know, bears some responsibility for this. In July, when Comey closed the investigation down, he was a hero. And in Republican circles, and James Comey, by the way, is a registered Republican, he was vilified, or at least he angered a lot of people. Now, the opposite is true. So he's fighting for his integrity. The agents want to make a case. You know, the rank and file, if they believe that there is sensitive information on this computer, and the only way they can do that is to make a mirror image and exploit it and look at it. They want to make a case, and they don't want people, because of privilege and because of power, to be excused by that. You know, we all know the expression, no one is above the law. Mm -hmm. So how are we here? We're here because the Clinton administration, or I shouldn't say that, Hillary Clinton created this situation. It's not the FBI that created this, and we really need to focus in on that. Who's responsible? All right, we're going to pick up on that point and, of course, see what impact it has had so far on the campaign in its home stretch when we come back in the France 24 debate.